In December 2019, a novel coronavirus emerged. Of those who are exposed and develop symptoms, approximately 10% present with symptoms of severe dyspnea, severe pneumonia, and acute lung injury and acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ALI slash ARDS. The mortality rate is estimated to be about 4 to 5%, but this may be inflated because data regarding mildly symptomatic and asymptomatic infections are limited. With an increase in the number of younger patients, the disease mortality appears to be decreasing. However, once a patient is in the intensive care unit with ALI slash ARDS, the mortality rate can be as high as 10%. In general, the coronavirus attacks the respiratory system by the binding of its corona spike proteins to specific cell surface proteins and or sugar receptor molecules of the respiratory epithelium. After viral respiratory epithelial injury, immune cells are activated to limit viral spread. Dendritic cells and macrophages are first-line antigen-presenting cells and produce interleukins such as IL-12, 15, and 18. These interleukins, in turn, activate natural killer cells and innate lymphoid cells and promote differentiation of T-helper lymphocytes into type 1 helper or Th1 cells. Th1 cells release a number of cytokines, including interferon gamma, tumor necrosis factor alpha, IL-1, IL-2, and IL-6 which further activate natural killer cells to secrete perforin, granzymes, reactive oxygen species, nitric oxide, and cytotoxic T lymphocytes in an attempt to kill the virus. Neutrophils and activated macrophages are also at play, damaging lung epithelium and endothelium. Breakdown of the alveolar capillary barrier allows fluid to accumulate in the alveolar spaces, thereby limiting gas exchange. The COVID-19 spike proteins also appear to bind to the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2 receptors in the lung. Current evidence suggests that ACE2 receptors in the lung regulate alveolar edema in the development of ALI-ARDS. COVID-19 binding to the ACE2 receptor downregulates ACE2 expression, thereby increasing lung edema that leads to ALI-ARDS. Initially, there were no therapeutic options and a vaccine is not available. However, novel therapeutic targets are being tested, including recombinant ACE2 proteins to protect against worsening lung edema. Patients with COVID-19 also have high levels of interferon gamma, which inhibits viral replication, but may also upregulate the immune system to an exuberant level, thereby causing more lung injury. Thus, neutralization of interferon gamma is a potentially therapeutic target. Similarly, inhibiting IL-6 may protect against exuberant immune response. Dexamethasone, a corticosteroid, has been shown to reduce 28-day mortality among those with COVID-19 on oxygen or mechanical ventilation, and the antiviral remdesivir has been shown to improve the time to recovery in adults hospitalized with COVID-19. Given the exuberant lung injury, the lungs in some patients ultimately become fibrotic, and lung transplantation has been utilized as salvage therapy. In those patients with progressive lung fibrosis, antifibrotic therapies may be novel approaches for prevention of this potentially lethal complication. Patients with lung fibrosis, such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, on antifibrotic therapy that develop COVID-19 may benefit from maintaining this therapy as long as they do not develop COVID-19-induced liver or renal involvement, which are contraindications to antifibrotic therapy. Finally, patients who recover from ALI slash ARDS but have evidence of lung fibrosis will need to be followed to identify and treat progressive fibrosis should it occur.